Hey everybody, how you doing? So some of you are probably wondering, when the hell am I going to get around to doing my best and worst movies of 2020? Well, before I do, there were a couple of movies that were released that year in some form that I haven't been able to watch until very recently, and I wanted to try to get those out of the way before I actually did the lists. Now, this does go against my normal rules of just sticking to movies I actually saw during that year, and not movies that were released during the year but I saw later, but you know what? 2020 is a wash. There are no rules anymore. Nothing matters anymore. Time is a construct. I don't really know what that means, but screw it. I'm making up new rules as I go. Much like all of you, I'm sure. So with that in mind, let's take a quick look at The New Mutants. This will end up being the final movie in the 20th Century Fox X-Men universe before Disney swallowed up that studio. Directed by Josh Boone and starring Maisie Williams, Anya Taylor-Joy, and Blue Hunt. Hunt plays young Danny Moonstar, a Native American girl who almost dies in a tornado, and she wakes up in some sort of hospital or asylum or group home or research facility or whatever the hell, run by Dr. Reyes, played by Alice Braga. Dr. Reyes informs Danny that she is a mutant, along with the other kids in this facility. All four of them have troubled pasts, at least two of them are assholes, and they are all trying to learn to control their powers. But it's not entirely clear just who Dr. Reyes is working for. Maybe it's the X-Men, or perhaps it's someone more sinister. And after Danny shows up at the facility, the other kids notice a lot of mysterious and spooky things are happening. So as I'm sure many of you know, this movie had a troubled production and a constantly changing release date. In fact, the two posters that I have on the monitor back here have completely different dates. I believe they wrapped principal photography way back in 2017, which seems like a decade ago now. And I gather he wasn't totally satisfied with it because he wanted to make more of a straight-up horror movie set in the X-Men universe, but the studio wanted more of a YA type of film. But after the success of It, the studio came back and said, no, 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 we changed our minds. Go reshoot it and make it like a horror movie. And then Boone was happy because he could finally make the movie he wanted to make. Unfortunately, the reshoots kept getting postponed, and then the Disney acquisition happened, and then the apocalypse happened. Not the X-Men apocalypse, I mean the COVID-19 apocalypse. And since by this point the cast had aged far too much to make reshoots possible, they just scrapped the idea and recut the movie with what they had, and finally released it in 2020, two years later than originally planned. And considering how long this movie languished on the shelf before finally getting a release, which is rarely a good sign, I thought it was fine. Maybe I thought that because my expectations were a bit low going in, given everything that's happened, and also considering the last two X-Men movies were kinda duds, but honestly, yeah, I thought it was fine. It wasn't great, it didn't do anything particularly groundbreaking in terms of horror or superheroes, but best X-Men film since Days of Future Past, I can tell you that. It certainly had a very solid cast. I already mentioned Williams and Taylor Joy and Braga. They also got Charlie Heaton from Stranger Things. Taylor Joy plays Ileana Rasputin, aka Magic, and she is pretty good at playing the crazy bitch. I will give her that. She has this hand puppet that she has full-blown conversations with, which was weird, and she is also pretty horrible to her fellow young mutants. I really hated that character at first, which I think was the idea. And I do find it interesting that she is very unlike Colossus, who I believe is supposed to be her brother, although he's never mentioned in this movie. Williams plays Rain Sinclair, aka Wolfsbane. This shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone who has seen Game of Thrones, but she was really good in this. I really liked how she portrayed the inner struggle with her religious beliefs and the fact that her religion basically led to her being branded a witch, which has got to be quite the mindfuck. And we have relative newcomer Hunt, who I thought was pretty damn good as well. And it's kind of appropriate that she's one of the more inexperienced actors in the film because she's also the most inexperienced mutant. While everyone else is learning how to control their powers, she's still trying to figure out what the hell her powers are. And for what it's worth, I thought she and Rain made a cute couple. 
The horror aspects were done fairly well. Basically, over the course of the movie, the new mutants start seeing some weird shit, and essentially their nightmares are coming to life and trying to kill them. The smiley men, in particular, that come after Ileana were creepy as hell. I mean, they were creepy at first, when they were all wearing masks, and then they took the masks off, and somehow it got worse. And, of course, we got the thing that everyone looks forward to when they see a new X-Men movie, all the cool new superpowers. Magic can conjure a sword basically from nothing. Wolfsbane can shapeshift. Cannonball can fly through the air, although he hasn't quite mastered the landing part yet. And of course, there's that really big thing that shows up at the end, and I won't say anything more because spoilers. It does have a few things working against it. The story wasn't really anything special. It's a bunch of mutants being held in some kind of weird medical slash research facility against their will. Never seen that before. I also thought Ileana went from hating Danny to suddenly being her friend a little too quickly. It seemed like that change just kind of came out of nowhere. And it didn't make a whole lot of sense to me that Dr. Reyes is basically running this entire facility single-handedly. Like, she has employers, but they are never present at any point in the film. It's just Dr. Reyes. And I have a hard time buying that. Like, she is a powerful mutant herself. Very powerful, but powerful mutant or not, anyone is going to have trouble keeping track of these five young mutants all on their own. Like, there's no security guards or other staff, not even a janitor. Like, nothing. But overall, it's competently made. It seems to be pretty well put together considering the troubled production. I was honestly impressed by that. It did have a few good scares, and ultimately, I went in expecting to see a horror movie set in the X-Men universe, and that's exactly what I got. Had this gotten a normal theatrical release in normal times, I probably would not have recommended paying full price for it, but if you're a fan of the X-Men movies, this is definitely at least worth a rental. And that's all I got to say about the new mutants. Till next time, take care.